Okay, Year 11, so just continuing with our second lesson and continuing on from the, the, what we were discussing in the first lesson as to the problems around the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, we are going to look now at what the consequences were of that treaty. So we know that the Treaty of Versailles was signed in 1919 by the German government to end the First World War. However, Germany didn't actually have a say in the treaty or what was finally agreed. So the superpowers of France, the USA and the UK dictated the treaty and what Germany would have to do without actually including Germany in the talks. So fair enough, you may think, because they lost. But as a lot of Germans actually thought they were going to win, they were indignant that a surrender had been signed by their politicians, which meant that these terms were seen extremely unfavourably by the Germans and they were angry as to what had been agreed. So I'm going to try and explain this a little more simply through the next task. What I would like you to now do is read through the table below and identify what problems this would cause for the government and how serious a problem this was. So I will do the first section to explain. We're going to look at the terms as to the Treaty of Versailles and what it meant for Germany. So if I look at, if I look at the, the category around land and what the terms were, Germany lost 13% of its land. That's about 6 million people, including losing land to its enemy France, such as the area of Alas-Lorraine. This also meant that they lost raw materials such as coal from a valuable area called the Saarland. Germany was also split in two and a bit of land in the middle was given to Poland. This was so that, this was so that the Polish could have, have, could have access to the sea. And finally, all of Germany's overseas colonies were taken away and given to the winners of World War I. So just to help kind of um, understand this passage, I'm going to show you a map down here. We can see that the land given to Poland effectively cut off Germany as a country. It was, it was split into two sections. We can also see areas which were given to France down here, Alas Lorraine. As well as the fact that the Saarland was to be administered by the League of Nations and France was able to take coal from it, which is around here. So if we think to the problems that this would cause for the government, I would put down A, geographical management as the country was not actually connected. So what problems would this cause for the government? They would struggle to effectively govern their country, to manage their country, because it was in two separate parts. Also, perhaps more importantly, the loss of wealth by losing their coal fields, which was so important to their recovery. So they lost uh, all this, the, the coal fields of um, the Saarlands were given to the French. And basically, that was a huge loss of wealth for them. See, their pride was hurt. If you think about the nationalists and their support for their country, and their pride in their country, the fact that they lost so much uh, territory would be a huge impact in the damaging of their pride. And finally, the loss of their colonies meant a further loss to their power and a damage to their image as a superpower, which kind of links into the one above, that their pride was hurt. Thinking as how serious was this a problem to the government, as a number, I would give this perhaps eight or nine. It was a huge problem for them, especially linking it go, going back to the, the, uh, the comments around coal. So what I would like you to please do is complete the remainder of this table. There are three different parts. I would like you to please read each section, complete the problems that this would cause for the government, and then give them a numerical value. Give yourselves eight minutes to do this, please. So using your numerical value, look at question five. Considering all the grievances that the Germans harboured, 
Which do you think was the, uh, the greatest? Which do you think was the biggest? Again, give yourselves three minutes to answer this question using evidence from the treaty to support your answer. Go. And finally, I want to introduce a source from an article in a German newspaper in 1919, which shows the level of anger at the Treaty of Versailles. As you can see, it states, Vengeance, Germany nation. Today, in the Hall of Mirrors of Versailles, a disgraceful treaty is being signed. Never forget it. On that spot, German honour is being dragged to its grave. There will be a revenge for the shame of 1919. Do we think the conditions were fair? The anger at the treaty is something we constantly come back to and something Hitler played upon throughout his rise. But what are your thoughts? What I would like you to do is write a paragraph to give your opinion on this question, on question number six. Do you think the conditions of Versailles were fair? Give yourself five minutes to think about this and write your answer. When you have done that, you have finished today's double lesson. Um, we are going to go briefly back over it next week, but please complete all the task sets as well as the Seneca learning, and we can discuss this when we next meet. Big well done for your hard work and I'll see you soon. Many thanks.